Okay, so we're here in VEX Code EXP. Uh, we have a Clawbot build here on the on the bottom left hand corner of the video, and we I have opened up a, uh, a blocks program or sorry a blocks project, and we've saved it as the, under the name Drivetrain. Uh, we're downloading our program into slot one on the robot brain. Uh, we have a controller that's been wirelessly connected with the brain on the build on the Clawbot, and then we plugged in the remote. Con the controller with using a USB-C cable into the computer that we're programming on. So we'll download the program to their controller, which will send it wirelessly to the robot. Okay, we're gonna be looking at adding a drivetrain. So let's go to our devices menu, click plus, click drivetrain two motor. Okay, so in this case, we have a two motors on the drivetrain, they're on the back. Um, if you follow the build instructions, they're on six and 10. So we click on drivetrain, we have six and we have 10. Uh, and then uh, we, the standard wheel size here is 3.25 uh, inches. If you're, if you're curious about that, uh, then go ahead and measure the wheels uh, using a ruler, just the diameter of them. And there is no gearing on this. So if you have the standard gearing inside with the smart mode, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And go ahead and click done. So what the drivetrain does is that uh, uh, in, so let's, let's talk a little bit about motors here. So so basically, if we go to add device, you notice we have motor group, motor, and drivetrain. So, so these are kind of three different things here. And the drivetrain is, uh, is, is, um, is uh, meant to relate the rotation of the motor to the circumference of the wheels, right? So by defining the size of the wheels and then counting the rotations of the motors, uh, we can tell a few different things. So let's go up here and let's take a look at the things that are available to us. Okay, so notice that with the drivetrain, you get a few different things. So in, a, sorry, in addition to getting the circumference of the wheels so we can measure uh, driving on distance, we can also uh, tell if we're turning right or not. This is with the inertial sensor inside the brain. We can also turn right for a number of degrees or turn to heading or turn to rotation. So, uh, so there is a glitch, uh, you know, I don't know if it's been fixed by the time you're watching this video, but there is a glitch. If we go to, to add device, we use motor, um, then uh, this, you know, turning for a number of degrees or to rotation is not going to work because of the fact that the, uh, the inertial sensor is reset uh, when you use those commands. So on a drivetrain, this is really how you would get uh, a combination of inertial sensor. So that's our rotation, heading, uh, and in combination with the motor. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this. So we have, um, and at the same time, we're gonna take a look at our uh, Python code. So we've added our drivetrain. Now we're just gonna go ahead and let's test it out a little bit. So we're gonna drive forward. Uh, let's say that we're gonna drive forward. Um, so in this case, we're gonna drive for, forward uh, 20 centimeters, 200 millimeters. Um, then we're gonna turn right. Uh, let's say we're going to turn right uh, for 90 degrees, okay? Uh, then we're going to go forward 200 more centimeters, and then we're going to turn to heading um, 180, okay? So let's let's see how these things function here, uh, and then we're going to stop driving, okay? Oh, then we're going to drive forward. Well, let's let's just try this to start out with. Okay, so. So we're going to go ahead and download uh, the robot, download the robot here, and let's see what happens. So we're downloading. While this is downloading, let's talk about some things that can go wrong here. So, so one thing that can go wrong is that basically the wheels can slip, right? So if we say drive forward for 200 millimeters, that's 200 millimeters that the wheels are turning, right? So if the, if the wheels slip on the surface that they're, you're using, that 200 millimeters might not work. Okay, if we, uh, so just know that. Now the inertial sensor inside the brain is gonna be a little bit more reliable, right, in some cases, but it might not be exactly 90 degrees. It might be 85 degrees or 95 degrees, right? So, so you really have to kind of experiment a little bit with these, uh, with these numbers to see how it's gonna work. So let's go ahead and, and run this. Okay, so we just watched it go. It went forward for 200 millimeters. It went right for 90 degrees and then drove forward for 200 millimeters and then turned to heading 180. So remember heading uh, is a 360, uh, 360 degree, uh, um, uh, 360 degree uh, measurement. 
So uh, let's take another let's take another look quickly at heading and let's think a little bit more about it. Okay, so we we kind of reset the robot here, and let's say that we went uh, let's say we wanted to drive for uh, two hundred millimeters, and then we wanted to turn to heading one hundred and eighty. Okay. Uh, then we wanted to, um, and then we wanted to do another 180. We'll have, we have a, um, we have a, uh, a, uh, option here. And what we can do is we can actually, um, we can actually reset the heading. Okay. So what we can do is we can actually go, Hey, you know, we're going to turn to 180 and now that's our new zero. Okay. So we can say, Hey, like, you know, we turned the heading to 180. Now we're going to reset it to zero. And let's say we want to drive another 200 millimeters back to where we came from and then turn again. So let's let's give that a shot there. Okay, so let's go ahead and download the robot. All right, so notice that this Python code that we're doing is really simple. So we have uh, my variable, which is just the variable that is kind of the default when you open up a program. And we can go ahead and remove that for, uh, for simplicity's sake. Whoops. Okay, so we have our, our function, which is when started, right? We only have one when started. Uh, and then we have a drive drive four forward, 200, 200 millimeters, weight equals true. Uh, drive train turn to heading, 180 degrees, weight equals true. Drive brain inertial, set heading to zero. And then we redo those three commands. So these are basically our three commands. We're doing them twice. Um, and notice that we also calibrate a drivetrain here at the beginning. So notice that when this executes, it executes, it reads lines one through seven uh, to get the function definition, but then it actually calls the calibrate drivetrain, then it calls when started. Also notice that none of the devices are defined inside of the Python program. So this Python program really only runs in conjunction with us uh, with this definition of devices so there is no definition of devices inside the actual code um, um, which is a little bit different so okay so we've downloaded our code let's go ahead and run it 200 millimeters 180 200 millimeters back and 180 and we ran into a little bit we ran in a little bit but you notice that so basically, uh, basically, you'll notice that by setting the heading to zero, we are able to turn to 180 again um, instead of... Uh, so let's take a look without the setting it back to zero, okay? Uh, so I just want to kind of highlight this because the fact that, um, you know, getting this control, you know, it's sometimes it's easier just to reset uh, the inertial sensor back to zero um, when you're programming, depending on the task. Uh, and, and, you know, if you want to keep track of it, that's fine too, but... Um, but sometimes it's easier just to set it back to zero. All right, and this will be the last thing we do. So that is the that is our uh, our intro to the drivetrain. It's the, it's a really easy way to have a robot that has two or four motors uh, to be able to control it uh, autonomously. Um, and it really it it is the way that's written into uh, Xcode EXP that relates the motors to the inertial sensor. If you try to do this using just the motor command. Uh, you're going to run into problems, so so give it a shot on the drivetrain here. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and run this again to see how. Notice that we're not resetting the heading back to zero. <clears throat> okay, so notice it runs, but then the heading is still already it, you know it's already turned to 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 180 degree heading, so it doesn't turn again, right? We need that. We need to reset the heading to zero. Now, if we wanted to have it do that. Right. If we didn't turn the heading back to zero, we could say turn heading to 360 degrees, right? And that would mean that it would turn all the way back around. Or we could say zero. Actually, let me go ahead and put it back to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it back to zero uh, and download again, which I should have done in the first place. Uh, Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and reset it. Okay, and run your own experiments on this. You know, it's a, it's an interesting thing to kind of just just you know take a few minutes, run it a few times, and get used to how the how the robot reacts, 
Okay, and that's it's turning back to zero, even though it got stuck a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Okay, that was pretty good. Even though it got stuck, it kept going until it hit uh, until it turned the heading back to zero. That's the advantage of using that inertial sensor uh, versus uh, you know using the the motors to turn a set number of degrees or something like that, uh, based upon motor uh, based upon shaft encoder. Okay, all right. Best of luck. <clears throat>